Hi, today we'll take a look to Zorin OS. So again, I'm mostly a UI designer, so what I first look at is the UI of the product. So let me just say the first look is pretty good. I'm, I'm not a big fan of uh, transparent panels without blur, but if I try to open up the menu here, I can see that this one is not actually transparent, but it does feel a bit tinted. So I'm wondering if this is just white or maybe it's a bit transparent with blur behind it. So let's try to change the wallpaper to see which one of the two it is. So uh, where is it? Display, um, change background. Thank you. Let's try to go something. This is looks pretty good. Thank you. And um, still seems white. Let's try with something more colorful like this. And no, I'd, I'd say it's white. So first of all, let me say that I'm actually quite impressed by the fact that the default wallpaper feels actually very natural with uh, the white look because it almost feels as this was transparent. On a first look, I thought this was transparent, but it, it isn't. It's very clean. There are no uh, unnecessary lines, only a few quite transparent ones here and there. And then there's uh, the system tray, which is separated from the system tray of um, other third-party applications. Again, uh, looks like the GNOME one, pretty clean. I think that uh, the blue accent color that they had it is very nice, especially in the selected applet. The fact that it goes from being black on white to white on blue, very good effect. And as far as the calendar goes, again, standard one with a very pretty gradient on um, the selected day. I quite like it. And the only thing that bothers me a bit is that we have this multitask button, which feels a bit um, alien to the general look and feel because it's all very white and blue, whereas the multitask window is much black like and it's a gradient over the background which is not something that's done anywhere else so it feels a bit weird and the meta key is actually mapped to that effect rather than the this uh, window which again is a bit weird because i expected the meta key to open up the start menu in this windows like configuration whereas it opens up multitask view these uh, icons on the background are actually a bug. They should not be here. And if we open up like um, files, I was going to say Dolphin just because I'm used to it, and then open up multitasking, we can see that it's um, it's buggy. But I think it's actually my fault. I don't know how I did it, but I'm able to bug everything. That's why I work at KDE. But still, you should not see these icons. So uh, if we go back to the file manager, I really like it. I think it's the third time I praise Nautilus. This is Nautilus, right? And, but I think that this is the prettiest theme that I've seen so far. This blue accent color with a bit of shadow, if I see it correctly, is really pretty. And uh, the animations are also on spot and the only thing that I think it's wrong is that this line, this oversize line, goes from the very bottom to the title bar which feels united but it just stops there. You would almost expect this line to go through the recent button or rather b uh, behind it. So I think that could be an improvement and that's probably due to the fact that there should be a title bar here, but uh, the Zorion S look is very, um, let's say, monochrome. So there's no separator for the title bar. So everything that stops at the top just before the title bar looks a bit weird because it, it ends in nowhere. But still, uh, I really like the design. So if we go to the settings, I've uh, th there's this bug that I actually lose focus if I try to go too much on the right, but 
still. If you go to the software, I've heard that there's a way to customize this thing a bit. So let's see what we have here. Uh, normal stuff like Wi-Fi in search, application, okay, each one of them makes sense. And there's no theme or stuff like background, notification. There's nothing about um, the layout or the color scheme. It's weird because they do, do they at first, maybe it's only in the ultimate ISO. This is the core one. It's the only one they give right now as a beta for Zorin OS 16. But yeah, so that's what we got. And of course I had forgotten the most important thing. So first of all, we've got gestures and they are one to one, meaning that I go up and down and up again like this. Very nice. There should be also a gesture to get to the um, task manager overview it's called, but I can actually not reproduce them right now. So maybe they will be in the final version. Also, of course, the appearance is not in the settings, but rather in the Zorin appearance application. So we've got a layout chooser. Let's try, I don't know, this one, which is a bit more compact. And you've got the name of the application, a bit like old um, KDE or Windows, uh, because uh, Windows also does this thing of mixing um, not uh, pinned um, application uh, with uh, open application with the name and then the same menu and same stuff then there's this layout which is with icons centered i think that's the only diff ah no we also lose the menu on the bottom left so it's a bit more gnome like let's say and then there's this one which is uh, the most gnome like yes this one seems just like gnome so yeah um, i did remember correctly that there was some layout changing and we can also change the accent color or gradient let's take green as an example and it uh, nicely is nicely applied pretty much everywhere so good job on that and the background can also go from white to black to adaptive which is super cool only a few like apps have this adaptive thing it's a bit sad no never mind i really like how the dark uh, wallpaper sorry the dark uh, background color is tinted with the accent color so if i choose red you can see that the background gets a bit more red and same applies for the title, um, sorry, the text uh, foreground color. So it goes from being white to being a bit tinted with red. So great job on that. Then application, I can choose um, the set of icons and um, this shell button is not working for me. As far as interface goes, I can choose the position of the toggle buttons, whether I want animation this jelly mode which is a bit like the plasma wobbly windows i actually don't like this very much but and then this uh, button already solves my complaint um, left super key opens up the zorin menu which in my humble opinion is uh, a better alternative very humble and we can also turn on the hot corner for the activities like in GNOME. We also have a section for taskbar settings. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, stuff to customize, so that's good. I mean, I'm a KD person, so when I see lots of settings, I get happy. I think that's a widespread fact. And then I can choose whether I want icons on the desktop, which I don't. And if I do, their size and so on makes sense and finally i can also choose the fonts i think it's very nice that we have this um, appearance uh, application where i can see set the most important things 
although I'd still prefer it was part of system settings because, because that's where it logically belongs. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I really like it and let's move on. So let's try our usual see how the application are. As always, my favorite ca category are accessories. So we've got a clock. Okay, it's, um, the same one as before. Looks good. Again, the fact that it just ends here is a bit weird. I would suggest to actually make um, the bottom left and right um, corners of the rectangle a bit rounded. It would feel a bit better, in my opinion. But except that it's pretty good. And the, let's see how the theme is for to do. What to do is it? Ah, it's the same one, yes. And um, this one is missing like the blue accent color for the selected um, task as it's pretty much, pretty much everywhere. So we could have uh, added it as well. There is a feedback button, but it actually opens up Firefox. So there's no dedicated app for feedback. Still pretty good that you have such a clean way to send feedback without having to, you know, go through a old Bugzilla uh, in, you know, install. Then we have a Maps application. This is using, I don't know, uh, I, I've seen GNOME Maps years ago. So this is actually the first time looking at it. It's pretty good, except now everything disappeared. Okay. It's usually good. <laughs> uh, let's see how the interface is, because this is the first time I tried. Oh, this is actually pretty, very pretty. Let's try to zoom in a bit. What do we have here? So uh, we have this. This opens up the location of my house. Very privacy oriented. And then let's try to go from, I don't know, uh, Rome, Italy, Lazio, yes, to Milano in Lombardy. Let's see, n not by foot because it's <laughs> days of, uh, it actually looks very nice. I like the look of the sidebar. It manages to be very consistent, even though, um, I mean, th they could have messed this up. There's also this fact that if you try to scroll up when there's actually nothing to scroll up, this blue like um, uh, gradient will appear on top. I think it's very pretty. Uh, it's very done very well. I've also seen it in the GNOME uh, reviews, but again, the blue accent color makes it uh, stand out uh, nicely. And uh, the same applies to the segmented buttons here and the indication sidebar toggle. There's a bit of lag when you open up the sidebar, but we can ignore ignore that. What else do we have? The weather. Let's see if it's sunny in Genoa. It is sunny. Interesting how it immediately got my city. And I don't know if this is part of the actual application or if it's a customization, but this Genoa, Italy and the color of the buttons is not actually white. It's blue-ish. Again, it's tinted from the, I guess, uh, background uh, of the clouds. So that's really pretty. Let's see if we can get some other image by changing, I don't know, the location places. Let's go to Milano, which is always, um, it's actually sunny. I was going to say it's always rainy, but it's actually sunny. Anywhere else? I don't know. Um, how's New York? Okay, this pop-up is too big to fit the how many New Yorks do you have? And it's sunny there as well. 
Well, I cannot guess a place with <laughs> rain. So what uh, what else? Um, I don't know. Uh, l let's try with um, Berlin, Germany, and it is cloudy apparently just as much. Albany in the United States. Yeah, I cannot get rain. Never mind. We'll never see how it looks with rain. So as far as games goes, we have mines. Unluckily, the icon is not the one that I fall in love with the last review, but also Sudoku and Quadrapassal, which I guess is because Tetris is, I don't know, uh, uh, how do you say it? Copyrighted word. These two games, uh, Mayong, yes, I know about. Is is Rot Solitaire? I've no ah yes this one yes the UI is pretty bad though this really feels old not even the blue accent color can save this UI you even get icons that are not monochrome I don't like this app and then you get the image viewer LibreOffice Draw photos let's go with image viewer again this is weird. The title bar is using a bluish color. I'm wondering where is it from? Is it from the background or what? Because it's uh, surely not from an image which is not displayed at all. So if we change it, it's still blue. Okay, so maybe it's uh, blue I mean light blue because the accent color in general is blue that's my best guess and it only seems to be used when you have a dark theme application which make, make me might make, make sense although at this point I kind of wish that light um, color apps had uh, tinted um, um, title as well uh, if I yeah, am able to get one like instead of black you could use slightly tinted black which looks great so yes but um, as always let's try to download a test image let's see to come up with some I don't know cat pictures uh, what is this search uh, accept cat image with a mask so pretty <laughs> how we found coronavirus in a cat oh this is, is really this the first result of cat pictures how we found coronavirus in a cat well this is her warming thank you let's try to open it up in the image uh, viewer of course we can't you don't accept web okay we can not use web um, pictures let's try with something else this is a PNG you should accept PNG I would have expected expected a web picture to be supported but whatever it's very clean. Can we rotate? No, this is GNOME 40 only rotating the image with the touchpad. We can only zoom in. Okay. And we can share. Did I see a share button? No, I didn't. Side pane. And stop the car. Okay. Let's move on. What else do we have here? We have seen this all, we have seen this, we have seen here internet, there's still this Ramina to connect to remote desktops, office is the you know, office, is there any, what's the theme, let's see the calendar first, I'd like to see the theme, okay this is pretty consistent with the other um, segmented button we had seen. And then this light blue could be a bit more bluish to follow the 
the theme because uh, this is a much darker blue you could uh, also at least have an outline I don't know it's interesting that the month is displaying blue this is uh, pretty again I, I love how they do an accent color that sticks out so much I think it's a great idea we should use accent colors more look if you see this calendar this is very blue this is so light there's a bit of difference I, I would like this blue to be more blue then what do we have we can synchronize the calendars but I mean we can actually try this out because I got some suggestion last time on how to actually make this work so online accounts go let's see if we can open up the drive for my account this time and meanwhile I still have my slow internet and meanwhile Let's open up LibreOffice to see if there's any theme applied to it, how it looks. Uh, wait, like this. And LibreOffice actually uses. Whoa. Okay, actually uses the um, segmented. Uh, uh, this has a name, the Rebot. Rib ribbon sorry uh, layout I like it I'm actually a big fan and I think that we should use it much more often and the card around the selected uh, ribbon um, I don't know button is consistent what we've w co with uh, what uh, we've been seeing so far so it's pretty good however the toolbar background does not fit well with the title bar it could have been easy to just set instead of this grayish the same color that you have here and here and then the whole UI would have been like the same color which is the design trend clearly of Zorin but they didn't so maybe that's something that could be improved meanwhile let's accept everything here and let's put a password again one two three four by six because this is how hard is it to misspell one two three four five six yes pretty good thank you now let's pop up the terminal and again oh this is there's a one pixel bug the the scroll bar actually goes one pixel beyond the window and it's also not rounded on the bottom whereas pretty much everything else in this OS is and the background color of the console could be the same one as the title bar again as in pretty much any other application I'm a bit uh, uh, weirded out from the look of uh, what is this sorry so let's kill Nautilus um, sorry about that there's no Nautilus apparently yeah of course I closed it is there any other Nautilus going on some kind of um, you know background I don't think so okay let's uh, open it up again and we actually have my Nicolò.Venerandi uh, drive with all of my stuff again old stuff I don't even know what we have in here exactly but it works and most importantly it works out of the box so this is impressive let's take this occasion to open up gedit this was not gedit <laughs> sorry this looked like a file but it's actually a google file but it's pretty good that you th you would think that this is a file so 
it's not displayed at some weird link, but it, it's actually a file to Nautilus and then it just pops up um, Google Docs. So I like this. And I've also just now noticed that uh, the blue accent color goes gray when you deselect the window which is um, a good de decision, a very good one because first of all you don't have any title bar uh, color difference between enabled and disabled application usually both in Plasma, Gnome and so on you would have a title bar that, title bar that changes the color when it's active but in here it's always white so you need something else to like give a hint of what is active and in this case it's the accent color it's also the shadow of the window you can see the shadow changing but that's pretty much a standard in any OS but um, using the accent color to give a hint of what's active is a really good idea that everybody should follow Let's get back to my Firefox. There's data. Nice. Uh, everything works so far. So we actually managed to show something working nicely out of the box without me complaining about it. Nice. There's a rhythm box, uh, which I guess. No, it's actually pretty. It's actually pretty. I think I had complained a bit about the rhythm box look in the Ubuntu or GNOME review but here it looks just fine maybe it's just a different context but you still have a difference of whiteness for the view compared to the background this is something Plasma also has but in here it seems like it always uses the background color but for the background and the view if you open up dolphin you will see that um, this part is white because this is the content and in some some applications prefer to draw a different color for the view which displays the content which is usually uh, a whiter version of the background as you can see here white gray but it's not done here and what else? Power statistics, it's interesting, anything useful. Hi story, okay, so we have actually a nice story of our battery. I think this is pretty important and on the long term, I'd like to see a um, battery graph to be, um, let's say, embedded in this part of the system tray, both in GNOME and Plasma, because uh, the more time spent the more it gets reliable and when it's really re reliable it's some important information that could just as well be displayed in the system tray i've seen some mockups of windows actually that do that we have the calculator okay it's a bit better than the last one i mean the look the calculator is still the same one but the buttons are a bit more natural. There's a cool animation when it's uh, over them, I like it. But um, the last one at uh, outlines and having outlines for every single button is not a good idea. So what else? Utilities, uh, locks. The screenshot application that I open up each time just because it's pretty looks a bit different is this a different screenshot application let's grab just an area why can't I select um, delay if I select the area to grab this is weird and I cannot customize these things either it seems weird to me let's try to select I don't know, this part of it and then I copy the clipboard. I kind of prefer spectacular or however it's pronounced near. We have a sound recorder. Let's start recording. It's the same one that I actually used for recording the audio of the GNOME review. Hello everybody. 
and then we have um, PTV, PTV for, I guess, what was it? A displaying video or editing them? Editing, yeah, looks like editing. And again, this is black, um, a black screen, sorry, theme application. So all of the text is slightly light blue. I like it. I think it's a good idea. And I usually use Kedin Live, so just to try out. Oh, this is bad though. These icons should be monochrome. Using non monochrome, like colorful um, icons on the right. Let's import a video. Um, I think I've done a test one, so let's go with test. Let's drag it here. Nice. Zoom in. I'm not used to the scroll direction, so sorry if I get that wrong. And we can drag it, the volume, uh, title. Let's create a title one. Uh, how do you edit? This? Okay, like this. Works. Maybe I would use. Ah, but this is pretty laggy. The progress bar is very laggy. And uh, clip, uh, let's see if there are some interesting effects. Uh, where is the effect library? Ah, there's lots of interesting stuff. It looks very much different from the KD Live um, set of uh, effects but yeah I'm not supposed to be reviewing <laughs> uh, PTV so this is just messing around to see mostly the theme and the UI I see that when you have a dark theme okay I'm pressing it okay the fact that all of the title bar is like a giant uh, um, a giant line um, input is super weird I don't like it. And uh, no, what I not noticed is that the scroll um, effect seemed to be light blue as well instead of dark blue. So it seems like they've chosen this light blue as a overall accent color in dark um, apps instead of the bright blue that we have in the light ones. Let's close this one. Uh, recording one is fine and the f does this not work okay it only works when you're playing or something like that and then you can drag it this looks pretty touch yes this is very touch friendly let's try a bit with um, a bit this OS with touch and pressing out buttons is pretty easy. If you drag from the bottom, I've seen that uh, the virtual keyboard pops up. This uh, is a GNOME thing. We can close it again with the down arrow. And if you drag from the left, you get the grid of icons, which I actually think is how I have broken it. So don't do it apparently or be a good person and actually report this bug to Zorin. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Again, the software application just doesn't work very well for me in the live uh, USB, but that's where it's most useful for me to test stuff out. So I just won't uh, show it at all. I think it's more fair. And then that's pretty much it without repeating too much stuff that we've already seen. So this is actually the first time that I'm using Zorin OS. I've seen some screenshots of like the early versions and I didn't quite like 15 or 14, but this version I think is really pretty and uses especially the accent color super right. I think that we should really learn something by them because it's not even like a color 
it's a gradient they have an accent gradient and it's done right I really like it so if there's one th one main takeout that I would um, you know take out <laughs> from Zorinus is the accent gradient which is beautiful and changing the color of the icons when the accent gradient is displayed under it I wonder if there's I wonder if this could be like the right way forward for the selected uh, uh, effect in plasma because right now it's just a blue line that doesn't even touch the panel borders and doesn't look good at all so maybe I should check that out but besides that I like it I wish uh, they did not I wish they used a bit of blur behind the panel because this transparency is not uh, something I'm, I'm a fan of but overall I like it I think it's well designed and thumbs up again <laughs>